What's going on, Kryptonites? This is Shane from Crypto Coin Growth, and this is part two of our Coinbase series, helping you to get more familiar with your Coinbase account. If you haven't seen part one, or if you don't have a Coinbase account already, feel free to follow the link above my head to get caught up to speed. So once you're logged into your Coinbase account, go into the Settings tab, and then go into the Payment Methods sub tab, and from here, you'll be able to add their payment methods. There are three options that they provide for you, and I'll go through each one of them in detail. So the bank account method allows you to buy and sell using your bank account. And you'll see that there's four to five days listed there. What that means is, is that it'll take four to five business days to make a buy or a sell through Coinbase. And although it does take a longer time when compared to the other two options, you have more purchasing power meaning that you have higher weekly limits uh, when compared to using a credit slash debit card or when using a PayPal account. So with these instant options, you can see the instant buy and instant sell. They are exclusively buy and sell, meaning that with a credit slash debit card, you can't sell coin to it. And with a PayPal account, you can't buy coin. So looking at the credit slash debit card option, you have faster transaction times when compared to using a bank account, but you sacrifice limits to have that increase in speed. And it's a similar situation for the PayPal account. And like I said, they are both exclusively buy and sell respectively. So I'm gonna show you really quick what you'll see when you're gonna add these different payment methods. So to add a bank account, what you need to do is find your bank and I'm sure you'll have no issue finding your bank. Once you do, you'll select it and you'll provide it with the login information that you would use to log into your bank account. And this is how you get authorization through Coinbase and your bank to make that link and to use your bank account to process Coinbase buy and sell orders. So once you provide that login information, it probably take like a minute or so, but once it contacts your bank and then your bank gives the okay to, you know, to give Coinbase this authorization, then you're good to go, set and forget, you don't have to worry about it. Looking at the credit slash debit card option, there's a couple things that I want to mention as side notes. So to add a credit slash debit card as a payment method, make sure that you have a Visa or MasterCard. Anything other than that won't work with Coinbase. So if you have like a Discover or American Express card, you can't use those. Another thing to consider is that Coinbase attaches a 3.99% convenience fee on top of the fees that they impose when you make a buy or sell transaction. But in this case, you would only make buys. So what you'll do is that you'll provide the name on your card and fill it out like you usually would fill another form with the usual online service. Once it's filled out, It'll take a little bit of time, maybe less than a minute, but it'll get configured, set and forget. Same thing with the bank account. You don't have to worry about it. With the PayPal account, you're able to add it by clicking this button and then you log into PayPal and you'll give uh, Coinbase the authorization to link to your PayPal account. So once you go through the steps that they'll step you through, it's pretty easy to follow. Once you're at the end of that, you'll have a PayPal account that you'll be able to instantly sell coin to. You won't have to worry about it from that point. And something I mentioned is the difference in purchasing power. So with these instant options, you get faster speeds, but uh, you sacrifice purchasing power. And how you're able to check your limits is you cancel out of that, and then you check out this sub tab here. And then from here, you'll be able to see your weekly limits within Coinbase. And if you're a new account, which most likely you are, you'll find that there are links underneath each of these options that provide you ways to increase your limits. Usually there are ways to provide additional documentation for verification purposes. And once it's verified through Coinbase, you should get a nice bump in limits. So at the point that we're at with our Coinbase account right now, we could get higher limits, but for our purposes, our current limits suffice. So that concludes part two of this Coinbase series. In part three, I'll show you around the Coinbase wallets for Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, how you can send coin to addresses, and how you can receive coin to your Coinbase wallets, and what all of that looks like. Hey, thanks for watching. 
Like and share this video, subscribe to our channel for more content like this, push the bell icon to get notifications about our latest videos, and follow the links in the description below. I'm Shane from Crypto Coin Growth. See you next time.